Hey there, and welcome back. My name is Gardner, and I've run a YouTube channel uh, called Gardner Bryant for the last seven years. I've made a career out of video editing on Linux, and I wanted to share some of the things that I've learned with you. In this installment of my video production on Linux series, I wanted to talk about the most important part of any video production, audio. Now, that might sound counterintuitive. Uh, surely the video quality is what's most important, right? No. Audio is really the most important thing when it comes to video production. There are only two scenarios. The first is that you have good video with good audio, and the second is that you have bad video with good audio. I can't stress this enough, but under no circumstances is it acceptable to have bad audio, even if you have good audio video. If it's background noise, if it's compression artifacts, if it's echoes in the room, all of these contribute to a worse sound quality. These are things that you're going to have to control uh, if you want to actually have good sounding audio, and it's really not that expensive to come up with a decent setup. Now, there are some good options for microphones that won't actually run you more than $30, and you might have a great microphone in your pocket already. But no matter what microphone you end up using, you want to make sure that you're able to control uh, the ambient noise of the room as well as its natural reverb. Hang pictures, drape blankets, and even throwing a towel over your head in the microphone is an option if you're just doing voiceover. I I'm not joking, I've done this many times. Okay, so now we have our audio clips. Let's talk about the methods that we can use to improve the audio quality in post-production. Now, I'm going to be using Audacity here, since Audacity has some of the most powerful tools in the open source world for audio processing. First, let's open up the clip that we want to edit. Once we have it open, we can then switch to a spectrogram view in order to see if there are any high or low frequency noises that are prevalent. It's easy to identify persistent hissing, rumbling, or squealing uh, using the spectrogram view. You'll see long, bright lines across the entire waveform, like this. By dragging out the track and zooming in, we can see that this audio clip has noise in the 800Hz to 1.2kHz range. We can filter out this noise using a high pass filter and selecting the correct range. If the noise was higher up in the spectrogram, we could use a low pass filter instead. We want to make sure that we're selecting the frequency range that the noise was in, and then we can start the filtering process. Okay, great. In many scenarios, that will start to sound pretty good. But if we compare before and after, we can hear that this process has removed some of the bass in my voice. Let's undo our filter since we want to remove the background noise instead of just removing the hiss. That's where the noise reduction effect comes into play. Now we can switch back from waveform view, and before I do my noise reduction, I typically like to run a loudness normalization over the entire audio. So let's do that. I usually leave the settings to their defaults. If you're dealing with stereo audio, you can check normalize stereo channels independently. Now, once the loudness normalization is complete, you'll notice that the audio is clipping here, or it's beyond the bounds of a, the normal audio track. That's okay for now, because we'll deal with that in a minute. But first, let's select an area of our clip that's just background noise. This ought to do it. Now we can open up the noise reduction tool and hit the Get Noise Profile button. This will sample the selected audio, and we'll be able to use it to reduce the background noise. So now that we've sampled the background noise, let's hit Control A to select the entire audio track. Then we're going to open the noise reduction effect again. These are the settings that I like to use. Noise reduction is 12 decibels, uh, sensitivity is 6, frequency smoothing and bands is 3, and reduce. All right, so let's press OK here and let the audio processing finish. Now, feel free to play around with these sliders. The lower the setting, the less noise will be removed, but also potentially the less chance that there will be that the sound will sound like low bitrate audio in the background. I've always found that noise reduction uh, artifacts and MP3 artifacting sound like shimmering echoes, and that's something that we want to avoid here. All right, we're almost done. Now let's run a compressor over the whole thing. These are the values that I like to use. Uh, threshold of negative 12 decibels, noise floor of negative 40 decibels, ratio of two to one, attack time uh, 0.2 seconds, and release one second. Truthfully, this is a rather tame compression because the mixing board that I use already applies a generous amount of compression and overly compressed audio starts to sound harsh and uncanny. 
and that's all I do to prepare my audio. Uh, sometimes you might want to run an equalizer over the entire thing, and what equalization does is it allows you to adjust frequency bands volume relative to the other bands uh, in the audio track. Okay, so that's it. So now we just have to save this uh, audio track, and then we can import it into Caden Live. Now, if you're exporting to Caden Live, I would actually recommend that you use a WAV format. But the drawback of WAV is that it can take up a lot of space on your hard disk as, you know, WAV is raw PCM data. Now, OGG is a great option as well. It's compressed, but it actually sounds pretty great. But I tend to steer clear of using MP3s in Caden Live because they tend to click uh, skip and pop when, uh, you know, doing random access throughout the, uh, throughout the timeline. Well, that's everything that I wanted to talk about in this video. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I would love to know what you think. Uh, let me know down in the comments. That's going to do it for now though. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you all have a great day.